So sleeping your power supply is an awesome mod to your computer, but there can be tricky stages. So here are five tips for going ahead and sleeping your power supply. <laughs> Hey guys, CP Modder here, back with another video. And today, we're taking a quick look at sleeving your power supply. So we're not gonna go into the whys, hows, and everything else with sleeving, but we're gonna be giving you five tips to go ahead and make sleeving a whole lot easier. So I've just recently finished sleeving my personal power supply in an awesome orange-themed sleeve. But I've done it with many other systems, whether it be green, blue, orange, and, well, everything else in between. So I've done quite a few power supplies in my time. But over that time, I've definitely discovered some tips and tricks that not a lot of newcomers might know when sleeving a power supply. So, let's jump into our list. Top of the list is what you're going to be using for sleeving, and that is paracord. Always use paracord. Now, paracord is this rope type of stuff that is used for, I believe, like parasailing or something to do with uh, sports and extreme stuff. You can pick this up online and eBay, and even in sports stores, they usually carry it, and they come in a range of colors, themes, and even and textures. It feels like rope and gives a very soft appearance when you go ahead and look in the computer. Now the benefit of using this is it is a whole lot easier to actually work with than something like PET plastics. Any of the plastic sleevings usually make your kind of wires a whole lot harder to bend and if you're in a very tight case it's going to be even harder to install whereas the rope just sort of flexes like rope normally does. So using paracord is a whole lot better than actually using the plastic options. And again, not to mention it gives it a much nicer looking finish as opposed to a sort of plastic grippy kind of look that doesn't always look the best. Tip number two is don't go out and buy expensive cable modding kits. They're usually not needed at all. If you're not going to be going ahead and changing the connectors at the end or really doing anything else special and only planning on actually sleeving the cables, all you really need is a safety pin and your paracord. That is all you need and possibly also to a lighter, but really you can get away with just those two tools. I recently went ahead and sleeved my personal power supply and all I needed was my paracord and my safety pin. That's all I actually used for the entire project. A lot of modding kits can start at $100 and go even up to $300 to $400 and usually include specialty tools that honestly isn't really that needed. Yes, they'll make the job a lot easier, but honestly, a one cent paper clip or one cent uh, safety clip is gonna be a lot better than hundreds of dollars of kits that you might use once, maybe twice. And that's basically it. So personally, don't buy expensive kits. Tip number three, have lots of time. This kind of project is time consuming because you have to sleeve every single cable. So imagine 24 pin cables plus then everything else on your power supply is definitely gonna take a lot of time. Even if you're able to sleeve a cable within one to two minutes, times that by at least 200 cables if you're doing a whole power supply and you have a lot of minutes taken up. I'd say at least three hours is needed if you're fairly experienced and anywhere up to five hours if you are new to cable modding. You also do want to take your time because rushing this kind of job can result in a dead power supply or even worse, a dead motherboard if you do it incorrectly. Tip number four, choose your power supplies right. A non-modular power supply can be one of the hardest things to sleeve because of the fact the hole where the non-modular cables come out is not gonna actually fit all the sleeving inside of it. Again, personally, I recently went ahead and sleeved my power supply, which was not modular, and I actually had to cut away at the housing to go ahead and actually extend it. Now, with that being said, because I have a little bit more experience with modding, I figured out how to do it with a really clean look, but it can result in a very terrible and not the best looking mod, which has happened to me in the past. So, I'll definitely say a modular power supply would be your best bet when it comes to adding sleeving to your systems. Tip number five, have a spare power supply. Whether it's one because you accidentally broke the one you're sleeving or just one as reference, it's always important to have a spare or some sort of backup power supply in case something happens. Whether you accidentally take out a connector on the 24 pin and forget where it goes because there's a spare one next to it and you don't remember so you can cross check, it's always good to have a spare. Also too, if you manage to screw something up when sleeving, it's always good to have some sort of point of reference of a working power supply so you can cross check and see what went wrong. 
And one extra bonus tip for you guys, tip number six is have all the supplies you need. There's nothing worse than starting to sleeve a power supply and realizing, holy shoot, you forgot to buy enough paracord or you forgot to buy enough parts. Having at least 10 meters of paracord is a must if you're gonna be sleeving with paracord and usually I'd recommend 15 to 20 meters because it's always good to have more than not enough. If you're working with heat shrink connectors, also to make sure you have enough heat shrink to get the job done. Again, Again, just because you have a connector that's only sort of this long or less than a meter long doesn't mean you only need less than a meter of sleeving. You have to times that by how many wires are actually on supply. And with that being said, also to study how your power supply is built, as not all of them are built the same. For example, on this power supply, the Molex connectors and SATA connectors are individual connections as opposed to just linking connections, which can make sleeving a whole lot more difficult. And with that being said, that is my tip for sleeving your power supplies. If you'd like a guide or a bit more in-depth into why you would want to cable sleeve a power supply, do let me know down below. If you are sleeving a power supply and having troubles again, let me know down below. I'll be more than happy to help you out there. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one. What?